In this video, I'll show you how to calculate the real rate of return. The first thing that I'll do is explain what real rate of return is and why it's important for an investor. And then we'll look at a real life example where we put this into practice. So suppose we can invest our money at 10% into an account for one year, but we expect the rate of inflation to be 5%. At the end of the year, we'll have $110 saved up as a result of our investment, but $100 worth of goods before now cost $105 a year later. In other words, what you could have purchased for $100 at the beginning of the year now will be worth $105 at the end of the year. Therefore, by investing and deferring our purchasing decisions, we really only have five extra dollars and not 10. This leads us to ask, in one year, what is the actual purchasing power, that is the real rate of return, for this investment considering inflation? To answer this question, we must calculate the real rate of interest using this formula shown right here. The value we get for I sub real, which is a percentage, tells us the actual purchasing power after the impact of inflation. And this is not to be confused as a nominal interest rate used to calculate some future value of a current saving. It's completely different. If you're curious as to how this formula is derived, a link to a write-up of its derivation is found in the description below. So here's our question. Mark invests at 5.39% annual interest. However, Mark expects inflation to be 3.1%. What is the real rate of return? Now, these values, if you live in Canada, are true. Some banks do offer 5.39% as of 2024. And the inflation rate for 2023 was around 3.1%. Using this formula, we'll write down I sub real is equal to, I represents the interest that you earn for your investment. And in this case, it's 5.39. Making that into a non-percentage, it is equal to 0.0539. R represents the rate of inflation. 3.1% is the same as saying 0 0.031. Over, again, we have 1 plus 0 0.031. Let's go ahead and use our calculator for this. We have, in parentheses, the expression at the top, which is 0 0.0539, take away 0 0.031. That gets divided by the bottom expression, which is 1 plus 0 0.031. We end up with the real rate of interest being 0 0.0222, which, when rounded, is roughly 2.22%. To help you interpret what 2.22% means, it means that Mark is able to purchase 2.22% more goods at the end of the year than he could at the beginning of the year. The fact that the nominal rate was greater than the rate of inflation ensures that Mark's investment outpaced the general rise in prices, safeguarding the value of his funds. This is why it's wise to invest your money, earning interest rather than keeping it saved in some stagnant account. If you have any questions regarding this topic, feel free to use the comment section below. Thank you for watching.